Palestinian funeral, and every day you see the Israeli them a bomb some place in a Palestine. And the Palestinian them decide, say, all right, it's enough, it's enough, you know, we all organize and attack. Who oh, no. So, we're going there till 5.45, when it's in news time, vibes and thing. So we'll go through the pieces. We'll go through the pieces. We have some whole heap of things for really mention to the people them. Because you know this is a mention program. <laughs> yes. But meanwhile, we're going to listen to this. Remember Barry Saman? Sing this song, yeah? It's not a different style, yeah? Hey, nobody has to keep up with this Israeli Palestine thing are going in, uh, in, over the soil. What a, hey, may I tell you? Hey, man, man is wicked against man in Rasta. Yeah, man, when you look from where I go on this, so, you realize, eh, uh, really, and guess what? A two set of people were uh, deep in their religion, you know. Yeah, them deep in their religion. And you can see your religion bring people to a point of evil. Because that's what I call it, you know, evil. And you see a man attack you because you are killing him and offense him in, in a, a kind of apartheid system for years. This year, yeah, every day, you see a Palestinian funeral and every day, you see the Israeli them a bomb some place in a Palestine. And the Palestinian them decide, say, all right, it's enough, it's enough, you know, we all organize and attack, oh no. Who tell them to go do that? Me the Prime Minister come out, Nathan Yato, say, come out and say, watch out. I'm going to bring Gaza to rumbles. Rumbles and so say that at him, Two million people get cornered into a little space where them down the light, no water, them can't come out of the country because it lack over one side of water over the other side. Israel over one side. And them a bomb the people, them like, them no business. You see them, you see most, me I look on the thing about four masks. You see the man, them drop bombing, I know. To those that don't know what a mosque is, is like, a mosque is like a church. And them bomb some church too, because you know, I know all Arabs are, are Muslim, some of them are Christian too. Them drop some bomb and blow up the plate. May I tell you, when you say, when you say, hey man, may I tell you, man, the man them say, you're an American Republican. I don't remember his name now. He say, they must wipe Gaza off of the map. Wipe Gaza off of the map. That is what I'm saying. And then the next, the, one of the big soldier man in the great name of the army say, them going to get rid of these human animals. And them term that them are used for the people, them, you know. This is after them are killed the people, them, and a Take with the land more and more and uh, push them further and further off of the land and uh, occupy the land. And the people them have decided to fight for them land. And this is where it comes to you now. And big bad America, big bad America has sent army down there because they find that some of them people them get kidnapped or killed in the thing. And here Biden, the war president, has said, they will stand by Israel at any cost. They will stand by Israel without even reservation. And when you look for where I go on in a Europe now, most of the country them in a Europe are say Israel is going to do. It's crime against humanity that. Yes, that is where the man them are saying in a Europe. A whole heap of people are demonstrating on the streets in a Europe. More than we are demonstrating against the Palestinians them. Them say it's crime against humanity. How can you 
lock off the people, them light, lock off them water, and prevent any help from going in to help them. That is, that is genocide. Genocide appear live power television. We're going to come forward. If from the Pepsi rollout in a Portmore there. Outside there. Pepsi rollout, sure. In a Portmore. Yes. The, the Prime Minister. Okay. All right. We'll go back to the cash part. I don't know where back on it. That was the ad pick and cash part special part draw. We have this to say now because every time these people make some pronouncements about certain things, it don't take them three weeks or one month. And when you look at this, say there's something with them at talk about. Don't make, it, it, it don't, it, 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 them don't put it in place that it work to the people them. Big Bill Alaba load them print paper. How much am I going to charge people if they do this on the road? The car tax man, I'm going to pay this, that, 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 on the road. No, I'm not telling you something now. Believe you, man. I don't know if it's only me who want to see it. I don't see no difference in the driving of the tax man them are going on the road. I don't see no difference with the bike man them on the road. I don't see no difference. The no helmet, I mean, you have few, few people still have on them helmet. But it's not like you, every time you pass, every time you see a, 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 a bike pass you, you see them have on helmet. All the pillion riders have on helmet. You see all four bike men ride in a line and a bob and weave through, 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 through the traffic. And none of them have on helmet. And four bike men are eight people that. I don't see no uh, helmet uh, 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 the point. So I say no. The Prime Minister did make a pronouncement say he may work with 10,000 a 10,000 they say yeah, 10,000 helmet to really boost up the thing. I don't know. I never hear him give 10,000 helmet. I don't know. I want to have Shane here. Shane here about helmet they may give it. No. I don't hear nothing about it neither. And my brethren, oh, I monitor all these things. I'm not here, nothing about no 10,000 helmet to the Prime Minister give it. So I don't understand that. Why you don't come out and print people and scare people and frighten people? And nothing, nothing we want to do, nothing we want to say, nothing we want to say. And come up and read you and all different programs and I talk about, we are going to happen if you get fine for this and fine for that. Not no happen to them all about, eh? Oh. <laughs> yeah, all right. We we'll, we we'll, we'll come back to it. We we'll come back to it because you know, so that the other day, I will have things take place by every time. You know. One of them is Wolipa outdoor broadcast. So I will go back to Chuka with the Pepsi Road Show on the road with. DJ Smurf. So here we go. Oh, they say, again. the Prime Minister said, I'm going to get to the right of them. I don't know why if he says free him to that talk, I'm going to get to it. I don't know how, how, how that go. I don't know if it's free, but I think it's free himself that will get to it. But whether free or not, the 10,000 of them is not coming. I don't know why these people have said these things and know so them can't fulfill it. Plus, Plus, all the things them that them say them going to put in place, that the taxi man them especially, don't drive on the wrong side of the road. When a line of traffic are drive, them go over the other side and block up the traffic, them will come up road. That, that, it come like, it, it come like them and say, oh, them government people they can't say nothing to me now. Them just get, it come like them get all worse. Because Mr. Man, I, I see your drive go down, your drive go down the road. And you're on the right side of the road. And the man them take take over on the left side. <laughs> on the left side of the road. It's a terrible thing. Terrible thing. I have an email, not an email, a WhatsApp message. Uh, some a sister said, Muta, I listened to your program last night and um, she asked me to play back some of that. 
some of those clips that we play as it relates to the Israel and um and is it that Palestine yeah Palestinian war because she knows say uh, a whole heap of people more people that hear it if if it play another day it was so interesting well I can't play about two because it still fit into where my idea was before I start the program, but my ideas get really after I start the program. But it's a very important thing and a very serious thing. One of my correspondents in England just, just emailed me and assured me about something that was taking place under the oldest of holy Palestinian or what you call Muslim temple. You know, all of them, all of them places, you know, them have tunnel. I remember we're going out on tunnel, and the tunnel where we're going now, in Ethiopia, it stretch go into a next city, from one city to the next. That's how large the tunnel them is. Well, them people eh, have tunnel where connect places, like where you have road. We connect places, and you know, them places there. You have tunnel we connect places. Well, apparently, some Jewish people that keep a meeting in a one of the tunnel them under the building. We're supposed to be the oldest of oldest Islamic place. I you know that is almost like sacrilege. That is like a, you know, it's like a disrespect. As we say, it's like a man. It's like a man. I got keep church meeting in a in a in a in a bobo shanty camp or a bobo shanty. I got keep meeting in a church when church are going. It's a weird thing, but people is wondering how oh, Israel is such a safeguarded country with all the high technology at them disposal. Give to them by America and give to them by Germany and these places where they might defend Israel to the, to the, to the key. But them couldn't really unravel what take place last week with them or this week, as I should have said. People are one less we are going or something more than what we know. Some big guys in Europe, I say, there's no way, no way we're going in, a, in a Israel there where the Palestinians them invade and breach the, the, the wall them in a Israel. Could have gone without the knowledge of America or the Israel in them. And the Egyptian them coming out yesterday and say, they had warned the Israelis about the impending attack that is where they must say the Egyptian them they must say but we did warn them about it weeks ago and then never he the one did but I wanna know if it was not heeding the warning or is something other than or more than where we they are so in other ways and look pan because when I look on the TV most of the European is, 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 a, is, a, is ridiculous. Most of the European country, them, the people that I see in the street, is Israel them are against. Is Israel them are blame. Them have the Palestinian flag a wave up not the year. So I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I thought that Europe would be hell bent and getting out the Palestinian them once and for all. But I can't do why I say most of the people them is not defending Palestine not defending Israel at all, at all, at all, at all. That's really amazing. So we look and we go on and we are say where really did it happen? And what is happening now? To me personally what is happening now is total genocide against the Palestinian people. Genocide in its highest level, inhuman cruelty. We call it now 
breaches of any UN charter or any paper were written by any paper where say you can't do certain thing. The Israeli them has thrown those papers and agreement out the window to create a genocidal war against the Palestinian people who they have been killing every day. They have been bombing them, shooting them, just anything, locking them off from civilization, barring them into Gaza. People don't get the full news from these so-called Western um, Western news people, CNN, NBC, ABC, Fox, all of them, white. It's amazing. It's amazing to see the news where them send out here to show you how vicious and barbaric these people are. If you don't ever clear to them, lose a thousand, a, a thousand people. So, white. It's amazing. It's amazing to see the news where them send out here to show you how vicious and barbaric these people are. If you don't ever clear to them, lose a thousand, a, a thousand people, say, in the Gaza area. It's the, it's the most cramped up city in the world. Two million people. And you're telling me now, say, you bomb four mosques, couple churches, and you know, kill no civilian. When you look at the dust, when it passes, your man, you see civilian on the ground like, wow. I wonder what take them picture there. I see in Western media, Al Jazeera to involve in a media thing down there. But why, may I tell you, man to man, man to man, man. So we want to play, we want to play this. To enlighten the people then about what is really taking place in that part of the world. And this is a news report from Democracy Now on the 12th of October, which is, I think, yesterday on the 12th of October. Or today on the 12th of October. <laughs> All right. In case, it's, it's a brand new news, so we will play it. Here we go. I will, all right, we have time. Here we go. To Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. Gaza's humanitarian crisis is deepening as Israel continues to pummel the besieged Palestinian territory with air and artillery attacks for a sixth straight day, reducing whole neighborhoods to rubble. Gaza's Ministry of Health says Israel's attacks have killed more than 1,350 Palestinians and wounded more than 6,000. More than 320 children are among the dead. Survivors have been seen searching the rubble of their homes for lost possessions and food. We left our homes thinking we would return in an hour. We left our belongings, money, food, and everything we owned. Now there are 50 people left homeless without food, drink, water, or electricity. I do not know how we will provide food for our children. I am searching here under the rubble for even the remains of lentils and rice, even a little for my children. Israel's energy minister said no basic resources or humanitarian aid, including water, will be allowed into Gaza until Hamas releases hostages. No, this is really, I have to cut it because that report there where the man said no aid will be allowed into the Gaza for help nobody. Whether you have broke foot, broke hand, whether you pick me dead or hungry, them now allow you for going there. To go help nobody, they're not no genocide. Total genocide. War crime. War crime, I let them call it. Even the remains of lentils and rice, even a little for my children. Israel's energy minister said no basic resources or humanitarian aid, including water, will be allowed into Gaza until Hamas releases hostages. His warning came after Gaza's only power station ran out of fuel, plunging the territory into darkness. The International Committee of the Red Cross warned in a statement, quote, as Gaza loses power, hospitals lose power, putting newborns in incubators and elderly patients on oxygen at risk. Kidney dialysis stops and x-ray can't be taken. Without electricity, hospitals risk turning into morgues, they said. 
the UN Agency for Palestinian Refugees, UNRWA, reports at least 340,000 Palestinians have been displaced across the Gaza Strip. UNRWA also reports Israeli strikes have killed nine UN staffers since Saturday with bombs damaging 18 schools being used as makeshift shelters. UNRWA's headquarters in Gaza City was also damaged by an Israeli strike in Israel. The death toll from Hamas's surprise assault has climbed to 1,300, with 3,300 Israelis injured. An estimated 150 Israelis are being held by Hamas as hostage. Israel's former defense minister, the opposition party leader and retired General Benny Gantz, said he would join an emergency wartime government and war cabinet led by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and current defense minister Yoav Gallant. On Wednesday, Netanyahu said every Hamas member was a dead man, while Gallant said he would wipe Hamas off the face of the earth. The remarks came amidst widespread reports Israeli troops are massing for a ground invasion of Gaza. In the occupied West Bank, Israeli settlers killed at least two Palestinians today in an attack on a funeral procession for four Palestinians killed one day earlier by mass settlers and Israeli soldiers. Israeli troops have placed the entire West Bank on lockdown and have killed at least 27 Palestinians since Saturday. Meanwhile, Israel's far-right National Security Minister Itamar Ben-Gavir said his ministry purchased 10,000 assault rifles plus helmets and body armor to arm settlers. Ben-Gavir was previously convicted of racist incitement against Palestinians and supporting a terrorist organization. Israel's army has blamed human error for a false alarm Wednesday that triggered air raid sirens in northern Israel and sent residents scrambling for bomb shelters. Israel's army initially reported a suspected infiltration from Lebanon into Israeli airspace. The alert came as armed groups continued to trade fire with Israel's army across Lebanon's border. Meanwhile, in breaking news, Syrian state television reports an Israeli attack has disabled the main airports in the capital Damascus and the city of Aleppo in northern Syria. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has arrived in Tel Aviv for emergency talks with Israeli officials. Blinken was greeted by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who thanked the U.S. for its support against the, quote, barbarians of Hamas. Blinken said 25 U.S. citizens are among those killed by Hamas. The U.S. has vowed to keep supporting Israel with aid and military equipment and warned Iran to be careful. Some reports have linked Iran to Hamas's attacks in Israel. Meanwhile, some Republicans are calling for an all-out annihilation of Gaza. This is South Carolina Senator Lindsey Graham. We're in a religious war here. I am with Israel. Do whatever the hell you have to do to defend yourself. Level the place. The group Jewish Voice for Peace has called for the U.S. to restrain Israel, writing, quote, the U.S. must work to immediately de-escalate to prevent the further loss of life and not fuel and exacerbate the violence by sending more weapons to Israel. There's only one way to end violence to address its root cause, 75 years of Israeli military occupation and apartheid. We must end U.S. complicity in this systemic oppression, said the group Jewish Voice for Peace. And Ankara Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan condemned Israel's blockade of Gaza and its relentless bombing campaign as a massacre. Cutting off a city's water, electricity, entry and exits, collapsing its infrastructure, destroying all of its centers of worship from mosques to churches, as well as their schools. Preventing people from getting the most fundamental needs and bombing housing units where civilians reside. In other words, managing a conflict using every sort of embarrassing method. This is not a war. It is a massacre. On Wednesday, the Arab League convened an emergency meeting in Cairo where it called on Israel to immediately halt its attacks on Gaza for a return to negotiations with Palestinians. In Brussels, Belgium, leaders of the European Commission and European Parliament led a moment of silence Wednesday for victims of Hamas. The EU leaders did not mention Palestinian civilians killed by Israel. Landmarks across Europe were lit up in blue and white colors of the Israeli flag, the Eiffel Tower in Paris, the Bulgarian Parliament, and the Brandenburg Gate 
parade in Berlin, where on Wednesday, several hundred protesters defied a ban on pro-Palestinian demonstrations. Several protesters were arrested. Elsewhere, hundreds in Vienna, Austria, defied a ban on protests to call for an end to Israel's assault on Gaza. I tell you, Europe, Europe is on fire. When we say fire now, the people, them, I take to the streets to declare that what is happening in, in, in Israel, I mean, not in Israel, what the Israelis is doing to Palestine is not a war they must fight, it's a massacre. And them did say it, that is like them are going to do. Yes, them did say it. Them are going to, them are saying them now nah, stop bomb and kill people until them let go the hostages. No, it's a weird thing because one man free, one man terrorist, the next man freedom fighter. And Al Hamas is the government in a, in a, the Gaza area there. And them have hostage. No, if you are going to bomb the people, them, them way there and kill them family, you know, lack of water, you can't come in and out. And them have hostage. What do you think are going to happen to the hostage, them? Because somebody, somebody report them, I show you. Some people are bad, say them, them daughter down there, them mother down there, and all them something there. What do you think are going to happen? That's the argument where people have all the way, you know what I'm saying? God is a revengeful God. And people actually say that and believe it. This is what revenge brings. Revenge is not a good thing. We see that happening at Jamaica. We see that revenge thing happening at Jamaica where a man bridging dead get shot and him go after the man who do the shooting, parents and family. And him get so vexed that him start to ball and say, where are we him I go do? Revenge is not a, is not, is a thing where it's almost uncontrollable in a human, you know, psyche. Very, very strange thing. I don't know how it reaches so. How it reaches so. People can protect themselves from outside forces that is going to do harm to them. But if the outside forces actually do harm to you, there's something in the human psyche that become revengeful. And there's no pill for that. There's no pill for that. Sometimes you get so revengeful that you lose reality and do some weird things. And you eventually get killed in that revengefulness. And we see that I go on right now where a group of people in a small part of our country is pushed off them land every day. The Israelis, they move more and more, move over the line where they're supposed to go. It's like you have your land, you know, and you have built your house, and a man next door, you decide, say, all right, he might build a bigger house. But he might have to build a big house. He might need more space. So he moved the fence post. And every day you come, you see the fence post that near to your little house. And you say, yo, 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 yo. You can't, you know, so say, you come too near. And he might say, so what? You're not supposed to be there anywhere. Where I want you to do? And if you take the fence post and move it back, him come mash down your house. And if you ball out too loud, him go that fire shot in your house and kill one of your people where you want the man to do. You think say more and more you're going to just keep doing that and him going to sit down there and ball. You never hear them say you push a dog around for so long. One day that dog going to turn and bite you. 
and the Palestinians them sit down there and I plead to the international com community plead to America especially America biggest aid is to Israel the biggest aid is to Israel all them weapons of destruction apartheid was created by Jewish people in Israel because sometimes you have to know say is the Jews around America? Yeah, seriously, is the Jews, the Jews around America? I'm going to take a time signal. The time is one minute past four o'clock. Pressure in you, pressure in you, pressure in you. You can just imagine how you have moved, you have moved the post and a bar in the man. And then when the man ball out now and decides, say, I'm going to take, take action. You kill one of them family, them. That is really we're going in other place there. Eh? And he must say, watch out, enough is enough, you know. You take me out enough every day. I'll make you do that to me. And you know them people that stay, you know, you can't catch Quark or you catch him shot, you know. So when you feel, say, you who move the fence are him, he must come after you. He must wait till uh, your wife uh, go to the supermarket and go shoot her. And then the whole place ball out now said, Jeez, I'm crying what a wicked man. Of course it's wicked. It's wicked. But you put something in front of the man for the man that 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 animal instinct in the human psyche raise up. And him act accordingly. You think say well, people who kill people, then they really want to kill the person. I will put people who want to kill people or that, but there's something in the human consciousness that when you reach that stage there, that breaking point there, a vexation, revenge just take all of him and him lose it. And after him do the craziness, and him sit down and him realize, right, this is what I do, Rasta. I this me do. I really this me do. It's a weird thing. It's really a weird thing. So, this is the stepping razor, the art of war. They will tell us don't have him. <laughs> they will tell us, all right. <laughs> all right, so we'll go and talk about what we talked about before until we get him back. I guess them soon get him back still. Yeah, we are talk about revenge and the human psyche and how human beings act as it relates to revenge. And no care how righteous to say it is. Everyone have that instinct, that feeling of revenge in them. When something of value get lost or get missing, and you know say it's somebody Cause you to lose that. Somebody who you love. All right. So, all right. Now we're on the line. We have Ralph and Smith on the line, managing director of the Transport Authority. For those of you who don't know, we are told that the fears them going to raise. Good, good night. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Mota. Good evening to those in Red Island. All right. So, we are react to the, the, the fear increase. Why is it necessary to have a fear increase now? Well, I think that question could be asked any time a fear increase is given. Yeah. But let me just give it a rational for it. The rational for it is that there was a fear increase that was given in 2021. Of, mm. There was an agreement for 25%. 15% was implemented and the other 10% should have been implemented the following year. For whatever the reasons were, that never happened. Since that time, the operators have put their case together in respect of um, various increases in their operational costs, insurance, licensing of vehicle, the cost for parts, which is foreign input fuel, among other things. So as a consequence on that, those matters were brought to the steering committee that the minister has established, and the matter of fear increase was properly discussed, ventilated, research went into the whole arrangement of it, and a formal call form fair adjustment mechanism has been applied yeah. and it was thought to be well deserving at this particular point in time 
so you have an increase um, to public passenger vehicle transport operators. All right, so explain how the breakdown went going now, like the distance, or how it go from like from the transport center in half a tree to doing the park to, to port more. How them break? How them going to break it down? Right, Mileage. In respect, yes, in respect of road taxi, that is akin to the rural parishes, um, which race where you're currently at. Um, road taxis and stage carriage. What happens is that what is given is a per kilometer rate. So a base rate of one hundred and thirteen dollars has been agreed upon and approved for the road taxi and a per kilometer rate of seven dollars. What that means is that if you are traversing a five kilometer space, if you are moving from let's say Sinans Bay to Ochreas and that kilometer it um, distance is five kilometers. It would be seven times five means thirty five dollars plus a hundred and thirteen dollars base rate. So that fare would now be one hundred and forty eight dollars. That's okay. how it is carried. And, and is the same for school children or uh, go? School children generally in uniform pay half fare, fifty percent of the fare. Uh, the yeah, right. who does a physically challenge on the elderly. Um, yeah. Elderly is defined as female sixty years and over and male sixty five years of yeah. age and older, yeah. provided that they have the appropriate identification. All right, so I'm going to ask you now, if, if, if somebody uses LMP, how much is it? How much is it? How much is it? How much For that particular space? The, so, yeah, right, supposed so to. How much is it supposed to be? A, a, a $130 journey would now cost you $160. $160. Yeah. So then put on $10, $30 on it. That's correct. All right, Mr. B, I draw me a car we live. Yeah. Yeah, you think, say, the people there who are driving, them taxi there I got a deal to $160 and the motel said them have no $40 trade if you give them to $100 well let me oh, say this to you eh? let me say this to you the transport authority and we made this abundantly clear at a press release this morning this morning will be embarking upon a zero tolerance approach for overcharging we understand the constraint on yeah. the average consumer are ready to find an additional $30 and what was a $130 fare. And therefore, no effort will be spared to ensure that the commuters are not exploited. The Transport Authority will be, used, will be using all the artillery available to it within the ambit of the law to uh, ensure that the operators stick within the prescribed fare arrangement. Smith. You are Smith. providing a service. May I finish? Yeah. You, yeah. you are providing a service. Okay. You you have to build up a customer relationship with your customers, and I've, I've often said you cannot kill the goose that lays the golden egg. Okay. No, if the fear is a hundred and sixty dollars, if you don't have the forty dollars, then take one fifty, and then tomorrow the customer comes, the customer give you one seventy. I've seen that in practice um, over time. But what we're actually saying as the regulator is that you must charge your appropriate fear. All right. I don't want to sound skeptical, you know. But this thing has been going on for years where certain pronouncements are made publicly. Like I just talked about the hel- like I just talked about the helmet them a while ago, the Prime Minister said they won't give a ten thousand helmet to a bike rider. And up to this day we're not hearing nothing about the ten thousand helmet. And it was a big pronouncement from all of the media them. Now I hear you know. I hear where I say, and it sound where I say, sound lovely. Like, give them that, and you, uh, tomorrow, man, you pay the rest of the money and all these things. Me and you know, say, them thing there is just theoretical talk, because no, down no, the no, line, I, I, wait now, wait now, wait now, wait now. I beg to differ. No, no. Okay. I beg to differ. I'm the head of the transport authority. I have a duty of care to the, 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 the commuting public. The Transport Authority is the vanguard of the public land transportation system, and in that construct, we have a duty of care to the commuting public, as well as to those licenses that we have out there. Mm-hmm. And we will not sit back and allow any of our licenses to exploit our customers. We are putting together a number of strategies. One of them is the creation and maintenance of a database that will be utilized right across the region to collect information as it pertains, or complaints or report as it pertains, overcharging. I'll be going after every single operator. We are prepared to activate our suspension or revocation policy to treat with the whole matter of 
suspending and revoking the license if the practice of overcharges continues unabated. So these are tangible efforts that the transport authority will be making. All right, so let me ask you a question. You think that, that no? Go further, that this is the yeah. first. This is the first um, where a fear increase has been announced, where the minister himself calls a press conference and calls together all the, 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 the agencies, the police, the transport authority, and other state agencies to come together and have a discussion, as well as the operators themselves, their representatives, to say that this is the way forward. So we are. Let me say something now. No, let me say something now. Let me say something now. I hear what I say. You think say. Right now, as it is, you think say any overcharging that take place upon the transport them? If I think that it is happening, yes, no. Well, whether or not I think it is happening, or whether or not it's happening, are two different things. It's no, my ask, answer. just answer, just is either you think it's happening yes, right but now. I don't want to answer you in the hypothetical. The no, it's not no hypothetical because me yes, people, if I think. people complain that yes. they are overcharged by a certain route. Right, and we are we are putting in place the appropriate communication mechanisms. We have no, created. you're doing it no. Yes, we have. So it wasn't there before then. We are putting in place the appropriate mechanism for persons yes. to feed the transport outside with the information. Yes. So we have given two WhatsApp numbers where persons can call in, they can send white voice, they can WhatsApp, and we also give a give a toll free number. So what we want to do is to ensure that we put in place systems and structures that will characterize this particular problem. So um, was there systems no, and structure there before? There, there's, there's no denial that that that, that overcharging is is, is is a problem. And have you ever problem. gotten any, any any reports about overcharging? Certainly, we have. And what did you do to it? What did you do to the people that were overcharged? We did overcharge? an investigation and brought to book the, the perpetrators. And you have actually brought people to the books? Yes. Certainly. In Kingston? All over. Okay. All right. So you say now the, the, the appropriate things is putting in place now, which is, is different from the one that was there before, or is an uh, upgrade? It's certainly an upgrade. Okay. It's certainly an improvement over what existed prior. So, so Mr. Ralston Smith, I, 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 I was say, all right. So when, when the first increase start? When it start? It starts on Sunday. The increase takes effect, effect on Sunday. All right, so we're going to call you back at the beginning of the year, maybe. Yes. And depending on what we get from the public, we will bring it to you again. Certainly, we'd appreciate that. All right, so we give Thank thanks for your input. Yes. And we we'll say, it's not that we're skeptical, we're well, skeptical, we're skeptical, because we hear these pronouncements all the while. And yes. It, 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 it just result, just like the driving on the road. The PPV man, them with the ticket talk to them. We hear all these pronouncements make that idea. And the man, them are be the same. We have not seen nothing. Now go on. Well, I, I, I understand, Muta, where your own anxiety would stem from. And what I want to say is that there's a new minister, a new chairman, a new managing director, a new day has gone. And we want to ensure that we capture the essence of and the public sentiment in terms of what obtained and what is currently happening. And okay. to find solutions, working especially through the steering committee established by the minister, which is a group of operators yes. themselves, along with um, um, persons from different state agencies, yes. to find solutions to the myriad of challenges pervading okay. the corridor of the public passenger land transportation sector. So there's no denial, no denial that this sector has a lot of challenges. And one of the things yes. that the minister has stressed is that he wants to reduce the, the misery index. Okay. Um, All right. Well, we're going to watch it. We're going to watch it. We're going to watch it. Okay. All right. Thank you. For Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Blessings. Yeah, that was Mr. Ralston Smith, Managing Director of the Transport Authority. And as we say, maybe January, call me back. Oh, uh, Shamara, write it down. You know, so we say we have a call back. No, uh, no uh, October, November, December. We're talking about three months. Three months into this pronouncement, we're going to call back. Because, yes, we just have say, we hear them talk and you can't run with the skeptical about these, these pronouncements. You can't run because we just have tell you about 10,000 helmets we're supposed to go out there to the people there, man. That's it. And we are here about how much money we get charged by people if they do this and do that. And really, when you look on the road right now, you come down quite okay in a line of traffic. 
and a man overtake you on the left side of the road. Because I realize him can't take when you over the, 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 the right side. Because if you overtake you, the, the thing them will come up the road. And some of them actually do it. Mejiza. Mejiza. M I J I Z A. Mejiza. Means hard worker. Hard worker. Chipo. Chipo. C H I P O. Chipo. Means gift. Gift. Dargas. Dargas. D O R G A S. Dargas. Means creative. Adiro. Adiro. A D E R O. Adiro means life giver. Life giver. So that's Mijiza, M I J I Z A, means hard worker. Chipo, C H I P O, means gift. Dargas, D O R G A S, means creative. And Adiro, A D E R O, means life giver. Mill names. Daya. Daya, D I A, Daya. Means champion. Umi. U M I. Umi. Means life. Baruti. Baruti. B A R U T I. Baruti means teacher. Kondwani. Kondwani. K O N D W A N I. Kondwani means joyful. So that's Daya, D-I-A, means champion. Umi, U-M-I, means life. Baruti, B-A-R-U-T-I, means teacher. And Kondwani, K-O-N-D-W-A-N-I, Kondwani, means joyful. Those are the names for today. We did talk about Israel and the Palestinian vibe. We're going to play this. Yes, we're going to play this. What, what's happening in Israel and Gaza? A massive surprise attack on Israel by Hamas, the group that controls Gaza, has quickly escalated into the most intense conflict in decades. An unprecedented military operation by Hamas and a colossal failure of Israeli intelligence. You had all these gunmen entering up to 22 different locations outside the Gaza Strip. Israel says hundreds of its citizens have been killed and many more injured. But the violent Israeli raids have not stopped bombarding across the Gaza Strip. There's so much going on, so we're going to answer three questions to help you understand what's happening. This is Gaza. It's a small strip of Palestinian land that's been under a land, sea, and air blockade by Israel since 2007. More than two million Palestinians live there crammed in, and they can only leave with Israeli permission, which few people get. It's often referred to as the world's largest open-air prison. And Hamas is the political and armed group that runs Gaza. It took control there after it won an election in 2006, but there hasn't been a vote since then. Hamas is part of a regional alliance that also includes Iran and the armed group Hezbollah in Lebanon. Israel, the U.S., EU, and others have designated Hamas a terrorist organization. Many Palestinians see Hamas as the most active group when it comes to resistance against Israeli occupation, especially since the other main Palestinian political group, Fatah, which controls parts of the West Bank, is often criticized for being ineffective. Now, Israel and Hamas have fought on and off wars. The last big one was in 2021. In the past, it's usually been an exchange of fire across the Gaza border. Hamas fires rockets into Israel. Israel drops bombs on Gaza, usually with a huge civilian death toll. But what happened this time around was very different. A lot of people are calling it unprecedented. Why? Well, really because of the scale of the attack that Hamas launched and because nobody really saw it coming. It started early on October 7th. Hamas fired thousands of rockets into Israel and then sent hundreds of fighters over the border. They overran a border crossing and broke down the security barrier that surrounds Gaza with bulldozers. Some fighters were in vehicles, some even flew over on motorized paragliders. 
They attacked towns and villages. At least 900 Israelis were killed, including around 260 at a music festival. Videos online showed panicked people trying to escape. Hamas also says it's captured more than 100 Israelis, including some senior military officers. Israel says children and elderly women were also taken. Nothing like that has happened since Hamas captured one Israeli soldier, Gilad Shalit, in 2006 and held him in Gaza for five years. Three days after Hamas launched its attack, there were still gun battles going on between Hamas fighters and Israeli forces in three main areas in southern Israel. Which brings us to another reason why this is also unprecedented, and that's Israel's failure to stop it. Remember, the Israeli army is one of the world's most sophisticated military and intelligence organizations, and the border with Gaza is heavily monitored. So this attack came as a huge shock. Unfortunately, uh, we were taken by surprise, absolute surprise. Any kind of communication going in and out of Gaza, at least in theory, would be listened to by Israel's intelligence units. And of course, the border, so-called around Gaza, a wall and fence, is also highly militarized, but clearly, clearly, that collapse. I think it raises questions as to Israel's military capability, which isn't a good look for Israel since it looked, likes to be uh, seen as the strong man and incredibly capable in, in that region. Israel has also vowed an unprecedented response and says it plans to wipe out Hamas's military capability and end its control of Gaza. <laughs> Israel's been hitting Gaza hard with airstrikes and artillery. All right. Yumna, please take cover. No, it's okay. Um, this is a missile attack on, on Palestine Tower. There have been pictures coming out showing devastation and bodies being pulled out from the rubble. More than 700 people have been killed, including children. Yes, um, there, this is just an airstrike now that you've heard. Uh, it seems that it's very close here from the area of where we are. We're at El neighborhood. This is the fourth mosque to be bombarded, uh, bombarded in the Gaza Strip. Remember, Gaza is really densely populated. Civilians there are trapped with nowhere to escape to. There was already a blockade there. But now Israel has imposed a total siege on Gaza, which amounts to collective punishment, making it illegal under international law. In Hashmal, in Mazon, in Maim, in Delik, all is closed. We are fighting for human life, and we are fighting Israel has called up 300,000 army reservists, and it looks like a ground invasion of Gaza is also imminent. In front of me, I can see soldiers coming in on Humvees, Jeeps, Range Rovers. We are seeing an increasing troop build-up. Okay, so why has all this happened now? Well, there's a clue in the name Hamas gave for its attack, Operation Al-Aqsa Flood. Just days before, hundreds of Israeli settlers with the protection of Israeli forces stormed Al-Aqsa Mosque compound and occupied East Jerusalem. This is a hugely important and contested religious site. It's often a flashpoint in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. We've done another Star Here episode all about that. We'll put a link to it in the comments. Now, Hamas said it launched its attack in response to the desecration of Al-Aqsa. But even if recent events at Al-Aqsa played a role, Hamas's huge attack would have taken a lot of planning. They also say the attack was a response to decades of Israeli violence and occupation. The daily impact of that occupation on the lives of Palestinians inside Gaza and in other occupied territories like the West Bank is also a big part of the story. Analysts and experts have been warning for months that the reality on the ground, the record number of Palestinians killed, dispossessed and injured and traumatized by Israeli forces and settlers across the occupied West Bank, the continued siege on Gaza, the relentless attacks on Al-Aqsa Mosque, they were all pushing uh, the situation towards this moment. I don't think anybody imagined uh, the particulars of the moment. But I think everybody with a sense of what was going on knew 
uh, that this calm was deceiving and that uh, um, something was going to happen, something big. The whole world is watching this all unfold right now. Two tickets to attend Retro Flick 80s and 90s Retro Party. The numbers are 974 5051, 974 5079, 974 5043, and 618 0352. The question is Name any two DJ providing music at Retroflex 80s and 90s Retro Party. Name any two DJ providing music at Retroflex. It is a nine. I come in, no, I'm sure just answer it right away. I'm not going to give you the answer when you give me the answer where you have. Okay, so, yes. Hey, John T, we are coming to Clarendon Sunday, you know. <laughs> we are coming to Clarendon Sunday, it's up here for me. You know, we are going to play up at uh, Mayor's house that is behind UTech University there. Tribute to Fela Ransom Kute. So you know, it's a pure African music that tribute to Fela Ransom Kute. This Saturday, uh, we are playing the music, straight African music, with some reggae in, involved still. And Negril, we are coming Negril too. <laughs> yes. So watch out for it. So you know, we give thanks to Shamara Preston. And we give thanks to Shane Clark as usual. Can't let him out of the mix. And we are going out with this. Find Michael's Gavin Sainz.